Okay, we'll continue on here with some examples uh, to try to solve with uh, risk reduction. So a couple of case studies we're going to go through here. So the very first one, let's say we are a company that builds casting equipment. So this is uh, building equipment that is used to mold and pour uh, molten aluminum into uh, automotive parts. So our company designs aluminum cast equipment capable of casting 45 cylinder heads per hour. Once the poured aluminum reaches a point where it is solid enough to be pulled out of the mold, still above 300 degrees, it needs to be removed. Perform a risk assessment on this task. So let's list the function and limits, the task, the hazards, the risk, evaluate the risk, suggest solutions, and evaluate the residual risk. And then let's look where are we before and where are we now. So let's start off here the function and limits of this. So the function so this is Casting. What other limits do we have there that are important? We said 300 degrees. We said 45 per hour. These are all machine limits that are important to us. Okay. 45 per hour, 300 degrees. These are all factors that we'll have to consider when we do our assessment here. The task, we are unloading parts. The hazards involved here, what would the hazards be? The hazard would be heat. Okay, we're talking about picking up very hot parts. The risk burn from hot parts, evaluate the risk, suggest solutions, evaluate the residual risk. So let's look at that. So let's start over here. Severity of the injury, 300 degrees, molten aluminum parts. Let's say that is going to be a serious injury. The exposure, is it frequent or infrequent? We're saying 45 parts an hour. This is where our machine limits come into, come into play here. So that's almost once per that's once per minute let's call that frequent we had to pick one out every almost every minute that's going to be frequent your chances your possibility of avoidance likely or not likely you need to pick the part up so there's really not any way you're going to avoid that so that would be not likely for avoidance so we end up up here the very highest risk by our chart, they are going to suggest you probably want to do elimination or substitution as a method of this risk reduction. So what would be a possibility for elimination or substitution for this? Well, I can tell you the way that this is most likely done in industry is this is most likely done with a robot. This is actually a picture of a robot that does this exact function here. Uh, this would, this arm would actually pick up the aluminum parts here. This is on a machine I actually worked on. So let's say we're putting in a robot to do this instead. So what have we done now? Let's start down here. Severity of the injury, serious or slight? Well, we are now a robot. Robots don't get injured, so we're going to be slight. Exposure to humans, infrequent. Possibility of avoidance, 
probably likely. We'd be talking about only maintenance functions now you would ever have to do. So we are basically now all the way down here. Awareness means we could probably just put up some signs that say caution hot parts if you go in here. And that would be sufficient for what we have. So where were we before? Where are we now? So we are able to su successfully reduce risk from high all the way down to low by putting in a robot to do that job instead of a human. Okay? So that would be designing away risk by elimination or substitution. Let's look at another example. Our company builds air compressors. Occasionally a valve will need to be replaced that is located near some exposed belts or wheels. So let's say there's a valve back in here that we need to get access to sometimes. What's the function or limit? Let's think about this one. So it's going to be a maintenance function. Let's say that's going to be two times per two times per year that this actually has to happen or something like that. The task replace a valve. The hazards this one here we should recognize this this area here. That is a nip point hazard. The risk we're going to say fingers broken. And nip point. So let's evaluate this risk. Let's start over here. Is that a serious or slight? So broken fingers, what would that be? Let's call that serious for the purpose of this exercise. The exposure, frequent or infrequent, we're saying this is a maintenance function. So that's going to be infrequent. We only do this maybe twice a year or something like that. Chance of avoidance, you got to reach right in there beside it. So let's say not likely. So this is going to put us right about here. The recommended solution for this this is saying, let's put in some type of engineering control on that. So a good solution for this, let's put guarding around those pulleys. Okay, this gets rid of that nip point hazard. So this is typically the way this would be done. So let's evaluate this afterwards. So let's say we do that. The Everything's still going to be the same here. It's still a serious injury, still infrequent, but your chance of avoiding this now is going to be likely because that thing is completely guarded. So we did bring it down a little bit, and for the serious injury, that's as good as we can do. Okay, so here's one, stamping press crown. Your company builds stamping presses. There are several components that must be serviced on the crown or the top of the press. So when we talk about the crown of the press, we are talking about this area up here. This is the crown of the press up here. So you gotta actually go work on top of that. How can this be accomplished safely? So again, this is the task is, it's a maintenance task. So let's talk about this again. Let's say it's uh, one time per week. The hazard, you're working up high, up high, so it's a fall. Falling from that height, let's say that is going to be fatality from a fall. Let's evaluate the risk on this. So let's start over here. This is going to be a serious infrequent because it's a maintenance task. 
avoidance, sorry. No, it's sorry, infrequent. And avoidance, you can avoid a fall. So let's put in some type of engineering control there. How can we do that on something like this? This is typically what they would do here. They put in a ladder actually build that right into the machine. A ladder like that, or a staircase right in here like this. In case of a, like a staircase like this, let's look at that. Let's say you have stairs on there. I would argue that you have now completely eliminated that fall hazard. So let's say you've actually gone right down here and eliminated that. We are now down here because there should be no there should be no risk at all associated with working with going up here in this situation. Okay, the last one here, risk assessment. For this case, your place of work, your place of work employees are required to load trucks outside with forklifts. This takes place both day and night in good weather and bad. Visibility can be an issue. It's functions and limits. Let's say it's outside. Outside visibility is a problem. The task is going to be Loading, unloading, hazards, forklift, that would be an impact hazard, the risk, and then let's say, number. I think that's a very high, I think falls and getting hitting by forklifts, two biggest causes of injuries, let's say fatality from that. Evaluate the risk. So that's going to be a serious injury. Exposure, frequent exposure. Avoidance, probably likely avoiding. You can avoid a forklift, but that's probably where we are. So recommended elimination or substitution. Now here's a tricky one. Is it possible to eliminate or substitute that risk? Yes, you could probably think of ways to do that, but that is not what is commonly done because it's really not practical to do that. So this is a case where we have to do the best that we can. This is what's typically done. We basically put safety vests on people. Okay, so this is a case where this is basically that's an aware awareness means solution. Now what does that do for us? Does that change the injury? Not really. Injury is still the same. The exposure you could argue probably that it might be infrequent now because the fork trucks can see you better. So there might not be as great of a chance of exposure and probably avoidance is likely now is, is likely as well. So maybe that brought it down to here. Maybe it didn't really affect it at all very much, but this is a case where this is just a dangerous job that somebody is doing. And we need to put as many things on there. This could be a case where we do some good training. We do some good awareness means. And we just try to mitigate that risk as best as we can. And that's just the nature of that job. Okay. 
And that's basically what we do with risk assessment. We're trying to bring it down as much as possible. Okay, so that is it for this part of the lesson. Uh, there is an assignment that goes along with this. So complete that on Blackboard, and we will see you on Friday. Thanks.